Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this conference call. I, along with our CEO, Mr. Pankaj Gandhi, and our CFO, Mr. CJ Kalra, welcomes you all to our Q2 and H1 financial year 24 earnings call. Today, we have gathered to discuss the journey of Rock Cells at LinkedIn, vision for the future, and the key drivers that have propelled us to success. As you know, FCL is a growing company, and we have been in the industry for almost 19 years. We are pleased to bring attention to our recently established production facility in Noida, covering an extensive 100,000 square feet with additional 60,000 square feet getting ready. Our relocation to this new facility involved the swift cessation of operations at the Garadun production unit and also moving operations from lease facility in Noida to own facility. This strategic move reflects our commitment to optimize operational efficiency by consolidating all production activities within the new owned Noida unit and streamlining processes under a unified roof. Looking at our performance in this quarter of financial year 24, Revenue from operations increased by 5.24% from Rs. 334.01 million in Q1 financial year 24 to Rs. 351.52 million in Q2 financial year 24, led by robust realization, faster deployment of 5G services by the operators, and growing demand for network coverage solutions. EBITDA increased by 26.57%, from Rs. 36.39 million in Q1 financial year 24 to Rs. 46.05 million in Q2 financial year 24. Margins improved from 13.10% to 10.89% over the same period due to increase in sales of operations and efficient execution of order book. Further, we are pleased to announce that FCL has initiated the supply of network accessories for the BSNL 1 lakh 4G network project, which is expected to be executed, executed over the next 12 months. Expanding our clientele, we have partnered with a large IP1 infrastructure provider and a neutral host provider for 5G inbuilding coverage projects. Concurrently, we have strengthened our market presence by introducing a new product line, 5G-based station antennas, with an impressive order backlog of over 6,000 units. Alongside these achievements, the company has successfully secured orders from key partners, evident in our robust order book position, which is stood at a substantial rupees 800 million as of September 30, 2023. We would like to highlight that the company has successfully concluded trials for the interference mitigation system in Delhi, and similar trials are currently underway in Mumbai. The potential in this segment presents a substantial opportunity compared to our existing figures. However, no commercial orders received as yet, but we are making progress in the right direction and we remain hopeful with the big opportunity. On the industry front, the telecommunications sector is at a crucial juncture, marked by extensive potential fueled by various use cases. Concurrent with the ongoing deployment of 5G technology, the government's increasing commitment to bolster the nationwide 4G infrastructure is expected to establish a solid foundation for telecom equipment manufacturers, a trend evident in our financial performance. We are committed to sustain a debt-free status, and in summary, the future outlook for FCL is optimistic. Additionally, as FCL stands as one of the approved design-led PLI company, we anticipate the benefits of PLI-based incentives to be reflected in S2 financial year 24. Lastly, position at the intersection of the groundbreaking technologies are dedicated dedication to innovation, strategic partnerships, and unwavering focus on sustainability empower us to capture the abundant growth opportunities that await in the future. I thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen,
We will now begin the question and answer session. First question comes from Mule Shavla, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. My season's greetings to uh, Privadi sir and the team. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, sir, uh, 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 we have gone through the reason, and uh, there are uh, still uh, what you call that traction we were expecting to come and the uh, uh, turnover to rise. Uh, we are not that uh, uh, happy with the kind of uh, ramp ramping up happening. So I would uh, request you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, dwell upon that little uh, in detail because uh, this interference mitigation system, we, have, we were expecting good uh, uh, business. Uh, we are still under uh, uh, testing stage and there, there was some uh, other uh, uh, system kind of that uh, uh, Geo has launched that uh, uh, air fiber uh, system. So, what is the progress of that, and uh, any any big ticket uh, development that can uh, really give boost to our turnover? So, that is my first question. Right, sir. So, uh, sir, see, uh, as, as we have mentioned in our earnings release as well, uh, mm -hmm. there have been you know a few uh, a few things which we were expecting a closure uh, within last quarter has not happened, has got delayed. And mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that, uh, the, the, the uh, expectations which uh, we had from, from the numbers have not come in. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons uh, is interference mitigation solution, as you're saying. So customer has basically decided to do a further trial in another region, uh, uh, on another technology. So, so, so far the trials happened was with Ericsson unit. Uh, now they are doing trials with the Nokia unit. Uh, and primarily, uh, it is being done to, uh, to, to increase the uh, requirements so that the cost optimization can happen uh, okay. by, by the volume of it. So this is, this is uh, uh, what the status uh, of interference mitigation solution is there. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, second second uh, thing you mentioned about air fiber solution, uh, which Geo has launched, uh, are similar stuff. So, so uh, we we are uh, you know the the product uh, is there. It's in the development stage. It's in the final stages. Uh, we have already offered uh, it for trial uh, at Airtel end. Uh, so, uh, so so things are progressing in that direction also. Uh, okay. But to tell you, uh, to tell you uh, one thing here, uh, you know, at, at times we have to make a choice. Uh, we, you know, we, we are still fairly small company, uh, right. and and, and uh, uh, there are a lot of businesses which are there, which are large volume, but the mm -hmm. margins there are are very, 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 very thin, right? Okay. So, so at times we need to shy away from such deals uh, where mm -hmm. there are, uh, you know, significantly low margins or no margins uh, to say. Uh, so, so, uh, and then there are there are few other projects which got delayed, which we were expecting to happen. Uh, some airport projects were there. Uh, okay. So, so those, those deals are still there, uh, but simply that they got a bit delayed. Okay. So with uh, uh, whatever uh, little delay that has happened, uh, uh, are you on track to achieve our target for 24 or we have to revise that? I think in the note probably you have revised it little downward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, we have revised it downwards because even if we get the closure of these deals uh, mm -hmm. within uh, this year, we will not be able to build those, uh, you know, realize the revenues in this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And is there anything one-off in our uh, present uh, working? Uh, our EBITDA has uh, improved a bit and uh, 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 
uh, you do you expect the uh, same EBITDA to continue and uh, uh, PLI scheme would add up to the margin or uh, is there anything one off? No, there is there is no one off in this, sir. Uh, we have increased our EBITDA slightly, uh, I think by 0.5 points. Uh, 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 0.5 percent basically, and it's, there is nothing one off. It's, it just depends on the mix of products that we sell in that quarter. So uh, that that's where it is. Uh, and yes, PLI uh, incentive will add to that, which will come uh, in the last quarter. Okay. Okay. Good. And uh, since we have decided to close down our Dehradun facility, uh, was there yes, any sir. tax incentive available on that scheme? Uh, because uh, I think in part, Dehradun had some uh, tax incentive uh, uh, for manufacturing units. Yes, sir. That that was the actually initial reason why we have started uh, our facility in Dehradun. But it, mm -hmm. it uh, all, all the incentives, all the benefits uh, were over quite long back. You know, I think uh, almost 10 years back they were all done. Oh, okay. So then it makes sense to have everything under one roof. So I think you are... Uh, yes, sir. An the premises in Noida is also given back, and uh, this Dehradun is also closed down. So 100% uh, operations could be from the facilities now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That 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 will optimize the operations and uh, optimize the costs and efficiencies. Great, great. And you have orders of about 80 crore rupees. Uh, does it include that 17 crore uh, order which you received from uh, uh, BSNL or uh, uh, yes, sir. in addition to that? It is. It includes that. It includes that. It includes. Okay. Okay. So, anything that you would like to uh, uh, guide us for uh, future uh, uh, growth, uh, we would be happy to uh, learn from you. Sir, the, the, the plans uh, are still the same uh, where we were, what we have shared earlier with you. Nothing has changed. It's mm -hmm. just that uh, uh, things what we expected to close slightly earlier just got a bit delayed. Otherwise, uh, everything stays as is. Okay, okay, great, sir. Uh, thank you so much for answering my, all my questions in details, and wish you all the very best. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Varun Mohan Raj from Skaniva Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, oh, good evening, and um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, in the post recent release, we have uh, downgraded our uh, revenue guidance from 40 to 50 percent to 20 to 25 percent. Uh, uh, but earlier, we've given a EBITDA margin guidance of around 16 to 18 percent. So, is there any changes in the EBITDA margins also? Uh, no, that that we have kept same, sir. Uh, so, so EBITDA margin remains same. Uh, as, as you would have noticed from our last year also, uh, so we, 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 are, we, are, we are a company which is under PLI, government PLI scheme. So, so we do calculations of the PLI incentives uh, in the last quarter, and that gets added uh, in the earnings in the last quarter. So that will make bring in the change uh, in our EBITDA ratios, which are currently, to, to what we expect. Okay, uh, and my second question is uh, regarding our lo long-term guidance of achieving uh, 500 crores in, in next four years, and also uh, we, we are expecting BSNL 4G project to have an annual run rate of like 100, 100 crores for next three years. So uh, do we stand with the same guidance, or is there any changes for the long-term as well? Uh, yeah, so so we 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 are still uh, aiming for the same. Uh, we are we are looking for the opportunities in the market. We are working on a lot of them. So, so the guidance of uh, uh, reaching long term, you know, within uh, next four years uh, to around 500 crores, uh, is still uh, remains as is. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. And uh, are we planning to, you know, add uh, new projects, uh, new products to achieve the scale of 500 crores or would we be able to do it with the 20 plus products that we currently do? No, we, uh, see, uh, uh, we, we have told uh, earlier as well, the, the way we see uh, our growth coming in uh, is the, the, the only possible way is to keep adding more products to our portfolio, which we are doing constantly, and uh, uh, to increase the market, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the addressable market. So, so we, are, we are doing both ways. 
So it, this growth will come uh, by adding new products as well as uh, not just uh, being India centric, but going outside India as well. So we, we are going with both the approaches. Okay. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the slightly longer term, uh, do we look uh, more towards the defense space or uh, we stick to our existing line of uh, uh, sectors like the mobile towers and uh, uh, airport tunnel and communication systems for airport tunnels and vectors? Like, like in, uh, in three, four years, how do we uh, envisage our uh, revenue pie to be across these three sectors? Uh, okay, so so it's it's see the telecom sector is more like you know a bird in hand, and which we know in and out because last 19 years we have been working in this sector. So so yes, that is something which we are confident we will be growing in that sector. Uh, defense is something which is new for us, and uh, we are still taking baby steps uh, in that sector. Defense uh, typically takes uh, a bit longer cycle. Uh, so, so, so we are working there, but uh, you know, if you talk about confidence level, then we have more confidence on telecom than defense space as of now. Okay, uh, thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Yogan Jeswan from Middle Analytics Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, like we have mentioned in the press release as well that we have launched several products and in past also we have guided that our growth uh, will come in from newer uh, product launches that we do. So, uh, can you share a bit more about the new products that you have launched and what kind of revenue we have booked say in FI23 or and in FI24 first half from these newer products? Uh, okay, so so look, uh, uh, new product. If you talk about then, uh, one is the antenna line, which is a new product for us, uh, to which we have launched and which uh, we have mentioned in our earnings release also that uh, we are holding a order book, order book for about six thousand antennas uh, already. Uh, second one is uh, uh, DC power distribution unit, uh, which we are supplying for DSNL project. That's another new product. Uh, for which we have orders. Then there are new products which are under development under the final stages. So one of them is uh, fixed wireless access terminal, which is uh, used for this air fiber kind of solution, which uh, Geo has launched. Uh, then we have, uh, 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 what do you say, interference mitigation solution. Anyway, as you might be knowing, the trials are underway, so that's a new product for us. Then we have uh, a new product, uh, again, under finalization, which is uh, uh, UBR, so unlicensed band radio, uh, that we are working on. And uh, uh, other new product is uh, 5G DAS. So, so we, while we, do, we, we have been doing DAS system for up to 4G, the 5G DAS is getting into picture now. Uh, for providing 5G coverage in metros and uh, tunnels and uh, airports. So that is uh, getting launched now. So these, these are the new products uh, that we have. Okay. And so how much uh, would few of them would have contributed in uh, FI24 so far? Any number that you could share? Uh, are these still I in very nascent stages? Yeah, no, not, not nascent stages. You see, like, like I said, DC power distribution unit, that itself is a 17 crore order from BSNL we have. So it's a, uh, it, it, it's not different products are at different stage. Now 6,000 antennas uh, that we have for uh, this itself is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's pretty huge. Uh, it can, can be in the range of uh, 8 to 10 crores. So, so it's, it's a uh, different, so uh, we, we have not gone for the make, like, segregating our revenues or order book based on the different products. Uh, so far, we have not followed that policy. Uh, but it's, it's a significant contribution, and uh, many more products which are there, already there, uh, uh, are yet to give us revenues, like interference mitigation solution or FWA or 
uh, unlicensed band radio or 5G RAS. These are like just coming out. And sir, in the development of these, could you share how are we doing it? Because uh, I mean, the competitors, if we look, at, they are quite big MNCs, uh, and I expect them to have their own technology team and uh, you know all the resources in place. While, like you shared in one of your uh, answers to previous participants, we are still a very small company. So, uh, being a small company, we do have some advantages. But when it comes to such product developments, how are we taking up these challenges? And keeping in mind that 5G is uh, coming up, so there, there's a lot of changes in the technology that is happening. So how are we keeping up with all those things? If you could just broadly uh, share share your uh, working out there. Right. So see, uh, I, I mentioned in earlier calls as well that uh, our, you know, our <laughs> philosophy is simple. Uh, something that we don't have readily available in market needs it. We partner with, the, with you know, global technology companies and bring that solution to our customers at first place. Okay? So, so uh, that's what we do. And with time, we optimize on that and do localization of that as much as possible uh, to do cost optimization, to do profit optimization, and uh, localization, increasing localization, and we start supplying uh, to customers. That way. So, so whenever we introduce a product, it has in its life, in its life cycle, you know, initially, again, it depends on different products, but one typical life cycle of the product can be that we partner with an international technology company, uh, bring that product, uh, let's say, you know, 100% uh, imported uh, as white labeling, we supply it. And then uh, over a period of time, we increase the localization of it. Uh, you know, considerably uh, over a period of time, and that increases our profitability and margins and uh, uh, cost competitiveness. And this is, uh, just one broad uh, question on your business overall in terms of your uh, history of the company. So if you look back, say, say uh, between 2012 to 15. You were roughly a 25, 30 odd crore uh, turnover company. Then from 2015, 16 to 2020, uh, I think we we saw a step up jump in our business, and we uh, were now in 80, 85 crore range. And then 21 onwards, we have uh, again shown a step up jump, and uh, 120, 130 is our range. So uh, why? Has there been no growth for for good three three four four five years kind of blocks in uh, in past and why are we now uh, expecting that year on year uh, we'll be growing up to five hundred crores because the guidance that we have been giving is for year, year on year growth while in past our industry or our company has not shown such kind of uh, growth so anything that is changing uh, meaningfully that is giving us this confidence uh, look. Uh, uh in initial years, uh, you know, uh, you, you can say even till six years back, we were primarily known as a repeater company only, right? And we, we were working in our shell. We were comfortable doing good margins. You must have seen our margins also. Uh, and and yes. single-owned com single company uh, doing that kind of margin, we were, we were happy, you know, with that and, and working it out. But then, uh, you know, six years back, we got a shock of our uh, life when the repeater business has gone down significantly. And uh, we, we started to scratch our head how we can remain uh, relevant in the business, in the market. And that's, that's where we have started to introduce new products to our portfolio, and which has given us growth. Uh, so, so, so you see, you know, we, that's that's from where you know we have been growing, you know, from 50 crores to 60 crores to 80 crores, and then 125 crores, 130 crores. Uh, so, so that has shown us the way on how we should increase and what we should do, okay, uh, to to bring in that growth, and that has brought in our hunger. Hmm. Now, uh, you know, knowing that formula and growing that way. We are following that formula and making it work. Okay. 
And sir, uh, are we still confident of going for the next three, four years continuously? Because again, like you said, after that, the shock of uh, repeater business going down, we added in more products and we have also tried to add on more clients. But still, the last three years, uh, the, there has been you know, a sort of a stagnation, if I can see in the numbers. Uh, and again, this year, we were very optimistic and then we had to, you know, uh, bring down our, 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 our guidance. 45 50 percent 25 percent kind of uh, guidance right uh, so see uh, so, so far you know what what was happening is we were increasing uh, in revenues by increasing the product but hmm. uh, we were not increasing our market so we, we were limited to our market approach the, the markets that we were addressing we were limited to that uh, that's what we were doing now what we are doing is we are growing our market as well we are reaching out to more customers there are more opportunities which has also come into the market uh, so it is a fact of that also and we are uh, you know tapping other markets also so that is going to give us further growth okay and sir uh, you also mentioned about exploring markets so any uh, insight or you know any developments that you could share uh, in terms of uh, where we are in that journey? Uh, where, sorry? Ex in the exports market, we are also now trying to uh, okay. tap into exports market. So any developments or anything that you could share uh, on that front? No, so so uh, look, uh, uh, as of now, that work is uh, pretty slow uh, because right now we are engaged or we are, you know, all hands on uh, capturing the opportunity in local Indian market. There, there are many of them which are there. And and uh, I, I believe in, in 12 months' time from now, we will start uh, going out aggressively for export market. Okay. So next year onwards you, uh, is when we will start to focus on uh, export more regularly. Right. Uh, so, uh, another question, or in I'm terms of your facilities, you, uh, just one last quick question, huh? then I'll go back in the queue if you may allow. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Sir, uh, we are closing down our Dehradun unit, and I think we are also closing down our smaller Noida units and consolidating uh, into one. So, in terms of the uh, equipment that were there in both these units, are all those being getting transferred to the uh, new unit? And what happens to the land parcels of these older units? Were they uh, owned by us or were those leased facilities? Okay, so yes, all, all the uh, all the equipment at uh, these places is uh, so. So at Noida, we have a setup which was in the lease uh, premise, so that all the equipment has already got transferred uh, to the new unit. And in Dehradun, uh, Dehradun was our own unit. Uh, most of the items have already been transferred to the new unit. Uh, some of them are now in the process to be getting transferred. Uh, so, so, yes, the answer is uh, everything will get transferred to the new unit. Uh, and the Radun unit, the land parcel, the building was owned by us, and uh, we should be selling it out. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All the best to you and your team. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I request the participants to restrict with three questions in the initial round and join back the queue for more questions. Next question comes from Anurag Agarwal from Agarwal Analyticals Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, am I uh, audible? Yes, Anurag. Hi. Hi. Uh, sir, so basically, I just wanted to uh, ask you, uh, what kind of a profit can we expect from the sale of the Dehradun land. Is there a ballpark figure which the company has come across? Have we uh, tried finding buyers for the same? Uh, see, uh, as we just got approval from the board uh, to sell it uh, last week. So, so now we are releasing advertisement uh, for selling it uh, in the newspapers. That should be coming, uh, I think, tomorrow. So we'll start to start the process uh, now, so right. Okay. Uh, apart from that, 
sir uh, could you just i just wanted to understand this part of uh, the technological change which is happening in this industry uh, like reliance is coming up with uh, the jio is coming up with fiber air fiber right so does right. that uh, does that reduces the use of optical fiber in the industry uh look uh, it, it's uh it's a complementing technology fwa is a complementing technology rather than competing technology with the fiber uh okay. so so anyone will use fwa or air fiber only at the places where he is he is not getting the fiber and that that's that's what my understanding is so it's like a last mile delivery kind of a thing for network yes yes Where, wherever fiber is not available then there uh, you can use uh, air fiber got it and uh, it, it's sir, like it's like you know you you will not use a satellite phone if you have a mobile phone with you right 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 got it and uh, apart from that sir uh, like you mentioned we want to start focusing on export and recently in delhi we like which is very fairly close to our uh, plant and our current setup uh, we had this exhibition called indian mobile congress uh, however right. i could not see our company uh, participating in that congress on the exhibitors list so like uh, did we not want to uh, exhibit this time or are we planning to exhibit the next time or is this not a relevant platform for you uh look it's it's uh, you you basically go to exhibition uh, for for making your uh, reach to customers right, right. Uh, now that that's the basic aim we we uh, have evaluated Uh, should we go or should we not go whether we will benefit out of that or not so so uh the answer is our potential customers who are there in the indian market we have already you know in touch with all of them we all and and all of them do one to one discussions personal meetings uh with us so there is uh, no potential gain we have seen in in exhibiting there uh and that's that's the simple reason why we have not participated there as a stall but we have visited the exhibition yeah got it last question sir when do you see the current order book being executed and what is the pli incentive which we think which we are aiming that we can get in the q4 uh look order book uh, see, this is this is the order book which was there on 30th september and and uh the other orders keep coming in you know so it's a it's it's a ongoing process uh we we expect you know uh as a revenue growth to be in the range of 20 to 25% the, the the range which we have uh mentioned so that is where we are going to be hitting uh, this year and w- what about the pli incentive sir what is the quantum we think we can get from the government this year uh, it it depends it depends on again uh, the 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 products that fall under pli how much of that we will be billing uh, we feel it can be as big as uh, 5 crores okay got it thank you sir that is it from my side okay. thank you thank you next question comes from rahul arul kandadil from vista please go ahead Uh, ma'am it's okay my questions have been answered uh, thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please press star and one on your telephone keypad next question comes from amit mishra an individual investor please go ahead yeah hello uh, everyone good afternoon um uh, good afternoon ma'am thanks um regarding uh, you know this uk subsidiary we have formed um golf uk limited uh, please can you expand uh, the vision and why we have instituted a subsidiary there um market opportunities for exports in few years time what is our current percentage export and is it going through the uh, the subsidiary um, and what percentage of Uh, exports and uh, you know uh, we see in the revenue uh, 
what sort of you know vision it comes from the vision so can you expand a bit okay so uh, look as far as uh, uk subsidy is concerned go rf go rf is uh, uh, has been created considering uh, two things one is uh, uh, at times you are able to get uh, you know better uh, pricing or better sourcing if you are dealing with a uh, entity in europe uh, so that is uh, uh, one objective of uh, sourcing uh, technology through uh, a uk subsidy second is uh, uh, again uh, you know the acceptability of a uk company in in europe market or africa market is more than a indian company uh from the purchase aspect so so some companies want to deal with a uk company or, or they feel more comfortable dealing, dealing with a uk company for uh, buying the goods so that is that is where uh, what the vision for the uk company is uh, uh, what sort of like are there margin differences uh, the products we sell in india and outside and also would we have any manufacturing facility eventually at some point uh, there or no uh look uh i i don't see a full fledged manufacturing facility uh un- unless you know tomorrow uh, li- like in india we are having a lot of make in india uh, focus uh, right. wh- whereby you know indian government is saying that okay the, the product has to be made in india only uh, unless something like that happens here uh, i don't see uh, we setting up a full fledged manufacturing facility it might be a, a small facility which which do you know packing repacking kind of thing uh or, or little assembly small assemblies uh, uh that 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 is possible but not a not what a full fledged manufacturing facility understood what sort of margins uh, a bit of margins we can expect i know it's too early uh, you wish to end it already it's a next year thing uh but if uh, if you can give some uh, because look it's it's here in it's, india it's it's yeah it's it's fa- fairly uh, you know early for that uh, to comment on that right. but definitely uh, working in uh, uh, these markets uh, we expect to have uh, better uh, ebitda the so second question quick question you have developed already on facilities but i am not clear if we have other facilities besides where are doing noida r and d uh, are we are we having other facilities also no so so the the, the facilities that we had uh, till till uh, or till uh, march 23 was uh, one is one was dehradun unit and uh, mm-hmm. one was lease premise in noida uh so both both these units we have now closed down uh or in the process of closing down there there are going to be in the process of closing down noida we have closed down and moved everything to the new noida facility can, can you just give some broad idea how much cash inflow we can see uh, by closing these and selling off uh, you know assets there uh so so noida was anyway leased facility so there was uh, right. no ownership there uh, as far as uh, dehradun is concerned we are still uh, uh, you know we have advertised uh, the property here it's to, to give you an idea it's uh, uh, about 500 square meter plot uh, that we have uh, built over uh, two and a half floors so it's not a very huge property uh, right. right so uh, we will will we are will be still expecting uh, bids from the market and uh, seeing that so cannot comment on the real value of that just last question on the guidance 20 to 25% uh, is it coming from our existing deals already in place because of increasing volume so on the deals we have signed recently uh, or is there a component of like expected deals Uh, also i mean I, i just want to know how confident we are to get 20 to 25% growth this year uh, so so 30 to 25% is is a is a nominal growth that we are expecting so it is it is not expected from any extraordinary deals uh, right. you know uh, which from existing uh, deals and all other reasons yes. which we have signed yeah. 
Okay. So that's yeah. that, that's yeah. that's more yeah, it's more confident number here, and anything on top is better. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, sir, and uh, best of luck for the remaining of uh, financial years. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Amit. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Piyush Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, can I join uh, later? I just want to know, sir. Just you know, six months back, we are giving a guidance of around forty percent plus type of growth, and suddenly we have lowered down the guidance. So, we can you just understand what has happened? And this guidance is for only for this year, or in the near term, let's say two three years time period. No, so see, uh, uh, as I told earlier, we uh, we were expecting few large deals uh, to be closing, uh, you know, so far in the in the H1, which we could have uh, filled in H2. Uh, and these deals are, you know, one is the interference mitigation solution uh, that is there. Second one is uh, uh, some airport deals. Uh, that we were expecting. So, so both both these things uh, have got delayed. They they are they are still very much there uh, on the table, but they got delayed. That that's the reason why this uh, uh, forecast has uh, been uh, brought down. Are we still holding on to our 500 crore revenue target, uh, or because of this uh, the growth rate has been uh, lower down? We see this 500 crore will. So that that is still stays. That that vision is still stays, and uh, we we are still working on that. So 500 crore is 26, correct? Or 27? No, so that 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 was our five-year uh, goal vision. Okay. 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 Thank you. That's it from my side. Thanks. 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 Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Amit Mishra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, I wanted to ask again, uh, do we foresee anything for next year? Um, so, 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 sorry, Amit, your, your question is not clear. So I was just asking about the CAPEX requirements. We have just, uh, of course, expanded, but do we see in next one or two years uh, further CAPEX coming in, whether in so, India or UK, and what kind of uh, uh, no. quantum? Yeah. Okay. So in, in UK, we will not be going for any CAPEX. As I said, you know, we are not expecting any manufacturing setup here. Uh, uh, so it will be only working capital, if at all. Uh, and uh, in India, uh, it will be normal capex. See, every year uh, we do a capex for uh, around two crores or something to to upgrade our plant and machinery, things like that, or for adding for new products, some new plant and machinery. That that will be there, but nothing major. And any other uh, deals we we have uh, uh, anticipating from the SNL side that one lakh tower. Uh, Thing, uh, apart from what you have already got, uh, we 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 are working on that. We are working on that still. So uh, yeah. When do you think that will that uh, actual implementation of through from BSNL side would happen? Uh, uh, look, it's uh, it has started to happen. To tell you, uh, so the implementation or the rollout project rollout has happened. Uh, I, as per my understanding, a uh, couple of thousand sites have already been installed uh, and in testing phase. So it, it, it's happening. The rollout is happening. And, and when when do you think our um, you know part would play out? So this uh, you know the, the the one product that we are supplying to them that that we have already started to supply. Yes, that product. Yeah, for other uh, yeah. yeah. And a uh, few other uh, products we are still, uh, you know, in negotiation stage uh, or in approval stage. Ah, okay. Okay, that's all from my side. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Anurag Agarwal from Agarwal Analytical Investments. Please go ahead. 
uh yes sir i just wanted to ask last one last thing uh what is the size of our land parcel in dehradun and what was the year we purchased that okay so uh it it's, it's around 500 square meter so not a very big plot it's just a plot of uh, 500 square meter around that and uh, we purchased it in the year uh, i think uh, 2010 or around that 2010 around that so prob- we'll probably be expecting some decent appreciation in the land value right uh look as i said you know we we are now advertising it uh, in the newspaper so tomorrow it it will be in the paper uh, then we will be expecting uh, uh, the valuation coming in from that so it's, uh, it's see the, the size is not big so so you know we should not expect that we will be making a lot of uh, uh, profit from that it's it's okay. uh, it's not bombay it's dehradun okay still i think over a period of 14 years 13 14 years we would have seen some kind of appreciation if not like at least a decent 40 50% appreciation i would expect uh yes should be should be right okay thank you thanks thank you there are no further questions now i hand over the floor to mr trivedi for closing comments okay thank you uh thank you everyone uh, for uh, being on the call uh, uh, and and being part of our growth story uh, and uh, continuing being invested in us uh, continuing uh, having confidence confidence in us uh, so thank you uh, and uh, talk to you soon again thanks thank you thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen this concludes the conference call for today thank you for your participation you may disconnect your lines now thank you and have a good day thank you bye thank you sir